thing that I, I jumped on with Ayuk immediately. You know, you can hear whatever you hear out of the training camp. Game one that he played against the Giants, something about him was, I'm the man. I'm the man and I'm here now, and you you got to get me the ball. I think he played his first game in, against the Jets, but the Giants game was when everybody was down and he was incredible in that game. And that's when you kind of look at him and you say, okay, this is the man. But I wanted to talk to you real quick about his role expanding. So you have to remember a lot of what happened last year. Guys were used like Jarek McKinnon. You know, I love the joke about McKinnon from the Wildcat. That's my favorite play in the world. But he was used out of necessity. Yeah. You know, Brendan Ayuk was being targeted eight, nine, time, ten times a game. Debo was hurt. Kittle was hurt. He had to be used that way. Richard so while James I think Junior was hurt, I mean, right. So while I and while I think eight is totally fair, if this offense is completely full. With Kittle and him, and you might see that just dial back a little bit because you still have to get everybody else involved as well too. Now, I'm I'm agreeing with you though. I want more Brandon Ayuk touches. I do, I do. I, you know, I'm a little skittish on the whole punt kick return. I'm just being paranoid. You know, I, I but there is no correlation to kick returns or punt returns and injuries. It's just something that people have made up as a way to say no, don't do it. But he was really good at it at, at Arizona State. So, if this offense is humming and everybody's available, Wilson. Mostert, you know, Kittle, Debo, Ayuk. It's going to be hard to just continue to get him the ball unless they have a, a unless they have a mismatch that they're just completely exploiting, which happens. There's games where George Kittle only gets four targets because Kyle Shanahan knows where to attack. So I just I think that that eight target range or that eight touch range is right. really good as long as it's as long as they're down the field. But I agree with you in the same way that if you blink your eyes at times, and I think it's the Saints game. They did it in the Cowboys game. They did it in New England. Those little push passes to Ayuk, you, you almost say, man, is that Debo? It, it, and that's the thing where I think Brandon Ayuk really is going to set him up his set himself up for success in the Shanahan offense. I feel like he he can almost do ninety to ninety five percent of what Debo does, but then he has all these other extra things that you look for in your star stud receiver, right? Mm -hmm. And and that to me is what's going to make him the number one receiver on the Niners for the next ten years. I think I, I really think this kid is special. And he has the type of talent to me to where I think he can be a top 10 guy. I you know, Just looking at the last year wide receiver class, I think the only guy who's definitively better than him is probably Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson. C.D. Lamb is really good, man. I mean, look, he, he, I know we hate really the good. I know we hate the Cowboys, oh, but C.D. Lamb's really, really, really good. I'll tell you another thing, too. Don't discount Jerry Judy. I, I found a stat. I believe PFF put it out. I, I think he led the league with uncatchable targets of 20. Oh, yes, wow. he had the drops. Yes, he had the drops. Yes, he was right. learning the game, but he's still winning on his routes. So it's it's going to be a stacked receiver class. And I agree with you. You know, there is a world where Brandon Ayuk is a ten, is a ten top ten guy, absolutely. And and it can only go up from here. So I just think that finally, after so many receivers, Kyle hit his right guy. And I'll say this: I'll go out on a bit of a limb, and I've been saying this, so it's nothing that never left my mouth before, but. I think Brandon Ayuk is the best receiver the 49ers have had since Terrell Owens. I, I really don't have a good reason why you could put anybody over him even after one season. Not Michael I don't Crabtree. have any for you either. I mean, right. I, I, hey, listen, I, I love Anquan Bolden because I'm an FSU guy, right? But, hey, listen, I, I don't think there's anyone who's been as talented as Ayuk has been than a guy like All right, so I should take that back. So Bolden was the last receiver the 49ers had have a 1,000-yard season. So I'll take that back, okay? And Quan Bolden. But what I meant was fully grown 49er wide receivers. Right. Terrell Owens was drafted. So yeah. I, I think that so if if we're doing if we're doing just best receivers, then okay, Bolden. And after Bolden, I think it's Ayuk. It's over Michael Crabtree, over any of those other guys, in my opinion, after one season. Might be a hot take, but that's how I'm feeling. There you go. And that is high. I mean, what you're saying it's high praise, but I, I think really the exciting thing with Ayuk, and I'll just end this topic right here with this, is that he fits that classic receiver role that 49ers fans have been clamoring for. Like, like you said, he's that Z receiver, but even with the 49ers last year, he was an X. I mean, really, he was almost a true X receiver with this team. So he's shown that ability to, to be that dominant wide receiver one type of guy that you're talking about, like with that Giants game specifically, right? I mean, that stuck right when you said that. That I, I remember that game exactly because – it seemed like he just had so much confidence about him. So where it, it something we hadn't seen out of all those wide receivers that the, that Kyle had drafted until that point.